Very good. If we want to make our way back to our seats, that would be wonderful. Very good. Very good, very good, very good. It sounds like uh, a lot of people are going to be invited to our Easter services, judging by the chatter. That's exciting. That's exciting. Uh, if you had a uh, birthday this week, we want to uh, wish you a happy, happy birthday. We know uh, our good man Peter had a birthday. We know Melissa had a birthday. We know Lorraine had a birthday. And anybody else who had a birthday, we do celebrate you. Um, we also know that Len is coming up this week and Safa and uh, Ram Collie and Estelle are having birthdays. And yesterday, we got to celebrate my daughter's 16th birthday. <laughs> Sweet 16. She's such a, such a gem. Like, man, I'm so proud of her. Um, we also got to uh, celebrate her the other day. She won uh, MVP for her basketball team. Um, she's just doing really well and... Yeah, it's a, it's a blessing. It's a real blessing. God's goodness, man, God's good, right? God's good. In every season, God is good. He's just so good. Even in the most challenging of times, God is good. He's a comforter. He's a guide. He loves us. He's a father. Um, this week, I had the privilege of um, spending some time with a wonderful couple who aren't here today for a good reason, uh, Robert and Jody, they came to our church several months ago um, after being recommended to check out a sermon online. So they watched a sermon online um, and then decided to come to the church, met you guys, look around you guys, yeah, met all you and said, we like this place. We want to be part of this place. So uh, they started coming. They started attending Connect Group. They started to be discipled. They started to be pastored. They started to build relationship. They love God. And then they decided, we have to get right with God. Let's get married. So on Thursday, I got to officiate their wedding right here in this church. What a celebration. What a beautiful time. I think we've got a photo of them, actually. Do we have a photo? Look at them. Beautiful. That's with their mom and brother. That was the <laughs> one of the club spot out the front, but you can't see it in that photo with the family. It's, it's hidden. I'm sure Rob would have moved everyone out the way and just had the car if he could. But it was really um, beautiful. They, um, they read their own, wrote and read their own vows. And they just taught from their heart about how God had transformed their lives individually, but then united them together as one. It's special, right? God is good. God is good. He's really, really good. A real blessing. Um, we had um, Connect Group on Wednesday night, and um, we've got a... Uh, amazing group of people in our connect group, just like every connect group, I guess. Um, but I heard a, 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 a testimony of God's power that just, oh man, it got me, got me right in the feels. Um, so I, I actually want you guys to hear the testimony too, um, again, because God is good um, and we want to celebrate all that he does. So I'm going to ask my brother Heinrich to come up here and share with us. Can we give this mighty man... A round of applause. Bring the big fella up too. <laughs> Very good. You're on your mace. There you go, brother. Uh, good morning, church. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> yeah, um, for you guys that don't know me, um, my name's Heinrich. Um, I work for IFO, so um, I used to do two and ones, but I've recently got back to eight days and six days and um, so the way I changed my roster was um, so I can be home with family more so do the eight and six and be more involved in church but um, last week everything took a bit of a turn what happened was um, we had to finish a project we couldn't finish it, it was no way we we're going to finish a project and we got asked to stay back so uh, two days staying back is all good. It's called the wife the first time. She said, yeah, all good. And then we didn't finish the project. And then two days later, we got asked to stay back even longer. 
So eight days became 10 days and then became 12 days. And then two days later, we couldn't finish it. It became 14 days, 16 days until it became 18 days. On the um, 17th day, being away from home, I knew there was no way we could possibly finish the project off before coming home. So I literally said to myself, it's probably going to be 30, a whole month, 28 days is the limit, but they keep us up there. That's probably the way it's looking. And um, so looking at, uh, at all the offsiders, and I just said to myself, man, I, I can't do this. So I stopped all work, um, and I said, man, I just need to pray. I literally have to pray, looking at everyone who's working on site. I was like, this is not good. Like, they have to call their families, and obviously their families aren't too happy with kids being away for so long. And um, I ended up FaceTiming my wife, Sam, and um, and uh, <laughs> she ended up saying, yo, let's pray, and this is, this is a whole turning point, it was... I called the whole group and said, let's, let's pray together. And um, I did get some side eyes. But all of us huddled up in a little group. While my wife was unaware she was on FaceTime, <laughs> um, which is pretty cool. And um, she ended up praying for us. And um, after that, it was literally felt like God was right there with all of us. Because everyone had a smile on their face. They'd never heard the word of God before. They've never seen me pray. Or, and um, doing that out there was pretty cool and then literally two hours after that we end up finishing the project just like that and the thing that stood out was as soon as we were done uh, finished and all of us the one girl was literally crying she was so happy to go home after being on site for 18 days with the six-month-old and um, they all looked at me and said man we should pray to your God more often and now We've made it a habit before going to site, on the way to site, each one of us have a day that someone's going to pray or try and pray. So, yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. Get you in the fields, right? You're out in the fields. How cool is that? Can you picture that? You picture that all these blokes in their high vis gathering around in the work site, on site. What are we going to do? My wife's going to pray for us. <laughs> Hold the phone. Lord, help us fill this hole. Well, the Lord filled the hole. They were filling the hole. They couldn't get the hole filled. There was, they, they just couldn't fill the hole. There was a void that they couldn't fill. They asked God, and God filled the hole. How cool is that? That is so, so cool. Very cool. These guys, man, the, the power of prayer is so good. And watching... For me, being able to watch people like Samantha and Heinrich, just, oh, man, it's so good. They're, they're out there leading their friends to Christ. They're out there discipling people, praying for people, and seeing God move. And, I, and I'm excited about that. We get a, so many amazing people in this church that are just rising up, emerging leaders coming up all over the place. It's so, so exciting, really exciting. Um. I also want to celebrate um, Monica this morning. She's, a, she's an Aussie now. Monica's a citizen, which is really cool. All Aussie, which is really, really cool. That's all right. We still celebrate her. It's very good. She's awesome. Awesome. And actually, I want to celebrate you as well, Jeff. You're a mighty man of God. Jeff is a good man. Just a good, faithful man. Up at the hospital, ministering to people, praying for the sick, um, yeah, really, really, you're a good man. Thank you. Um, we had a meeting this week, which was also really exciting, um, with one of our local high schools, a big local high school, uh, to talk about a project that we want to do with the high school, um, which is working, uh, it, we're creating a program, which is um, family and domestic violence prevention, working with um, teenagers in the high school. And the high school have invited us in, secular high school, not a Christian high school, and they've actually changed their curriculum to suit our program so we can be in the school every week helping the school, um, which is, yeah, just super, super exciting. Um, really love that. It's really good. Things are happening. It's exciting. It's really good. God is really moving. We already have six people down for baptisms on Easter. Um, let's believe for some more. If you need to be baptized, then um, step out in faith and do it. Amen? All right, all right, we'll get into the Word. This morning, uh, 
I've entitled this sermon, Give It to God. Give it to God. But before we get into the Word, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we uh, want to give you the reverence and the honour that is necessary, that is needed. You are amazing. You are sovereign. You are almighty. And Lord, I pray this morning that it's your word that is heard, that there be less of me and more of you. Lord, I pray that every ear that hears your word this morning receives it and is transformed by it, me included, Lord. Speak to us all this morning. May we be completely hidden in the shadow of the cross under your covering, your grace and your mercy. May we be supple enough, humble enough and teachable enough to receive a revelation from heaven to know you more, to know you more. May you be glorified this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did you know that God has an incredible plan for your life? Did you know that? He has an amazing plan for you personally. He has created you wonderfully. The destiny and purpose that he has created you for is more powerful, more amazing, more transformative than you can fathom or imagine in your mind. God has created you on purpose, with a purpose. Did you know that? On purpose, with a purpose. I think most of us in the room today would say, yeah, I, I kind of believe that. I think God has created me for a purpose. Don't always know exactly what it is, but I know He's created me for something good. But we also go through tough seasons. Seasons of frustration. Seasons of uncertainty. Seasons of hurt and seasons of worry. We worry about all sorts of things. Or is that just me? I remember when our children were young, my wife reminded me of this yesterday, that both Christy and I would often worry about our parenting. Christy especially, she'd worry about being a good mum. Always concerned if she was good enough, if she was mum enough. How will the kids turn out? What will they be like when they grow up? Is our parenting too strict? Is our parenting not strict enough? Do we show enough love? Do we give them enough freedom to choose? Do we give them too much freedom to choose? Is anybody with me here? Does anybody do this, parents out there? Are we putting too little food in their lunchbox? Are we putting too much food in their lunchbox? Is there enough snacks or not enough snacks? Is that too much fruit or not enough fruit? How many grapes can they eat? Do we make them study too much? Are they not studying enough? Are they doing too much extracurricular activities? Are they not doing enough extracurricular activities? Are they spending enough time reading their Bibles? Are we pushing it on them too much? What are we doing? So much worry, so much concern. Last night I was standing and watching as my daughter Grace was giving a speech at her 16th birthday. Thanking God for her friends. I wasn't worried in that moment as I watched my 16-year-old daughter thank God for her friends. I was looking on 
filled with pride. And then worry came back. She's growing up way too fast. What happened to my little girl? She's become a young woman. She's getting her driver's license. Can you take me driving lessons, Dad? Now I'm worried. And no doubt, in some years' time, she'll be getting married. Many, 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 many years' time. But it makes me worry. Made me think about my other children. My oldest son turns 21 next month. And he's going through the process of becoming a federal police agent. Any moment now, my little boy, who's big <laughs> and covered in tattoos, <laughs> speaks with a deep voice. How are you going, Dad? <laughs> Any moment now, he's going to be flying to Canberra to spend six months of intensive training with the federal police. Then any moment from that point, he could be posted anywhere in the world. Makes you worry. What if it's far away? What if it's in a different country? What if it's in a dangerous country? What if it's a dangerous posting? What if he needs me? He doesn't really need me anymore. <laughs> But so much to think about and so much to worry about. And that's only one topic of life. It can be challenging. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. When you get there, say hallelujah. Verse 25. Therefore I tell you, Do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. It's, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. So don't worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. For the pagans run after all those things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Flick over to Philippians chapter 4. When you get there, say hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Beautiful. Jesus said it very plainly. And quite repetitively, do not worry. 
do not worry. Now, I'm of the opinion that if Jesus says not to do something, then he has our best interests at heart. Amen? He isn't trying to make things hard for us. He isn't trying to trick us or lead us to a false sense of security. He is concerned about our well-being. The very fact that not worrying is talked about so much in Scripture is amazing. And yet we still worry. It shows us that just maybe we've missed something. Something has eluded us. We've tolerated something in our lives and in our thoughts and in our emotions. We've tolerated something and allowed it to flourish. That thing, in reality, worry, well, that's destructive. That doesn't help us. And Jesus told us not to do it, not to worry. We worry about so, so many things. I know people that all they do is worry. doesn't matter what's happening, they worry about it. I'm pretty sure people like that worry when they get a gift that they might get a paper cut opening the gift. I'm going to pay for you to go on a holiday. What happens if something happens on the holiday? What happens if I get sunburned? <laughs> We get twisted and tied up. We worry, we think, we over-process, we keep on worrying, and then we start melting down. Our worries and our problems start to overwhelm us. So consumed by concerns and thoughts and feelings. So overwhelmed by all the things around us, the could-bes, the ifs, the maybes, the what-abouts, the problems, that we forget. We have a heavenly Father right here saying to us, do you want my help? And all we have to do is say, I want your help. Amazing, eh? So simple, yet we struggle so much. Then after we say, I want your help, we need to then trust that he can do what he needs to do. And then we need to let him do what needs to be done. And sometimes that's the hard part. We can trust that God has a plan. We can trust that God's plan is good. But sometimes we don't want to trust the way that God will outwork his plan. If you could just do it my way, God. Just do it the way I would like it done. That would be much better, please. If you could just have the outcome that I choose, then I'll be okay with it. John 16, 33 says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. If you are counting on yourself to solve all your worries and problems, then of course, you're going to be worried and stressed. If you are relying on your own ability, your own capacity, and who you are to solve all your issues, it's going to be overwhelming. It doesn't matter how strong you are, or how wise you are, or how capable you are, or how charismatic you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have, or how old you are, or how much influence you have. You are not designed to be able to take on everything. You are not designed to be able to handle everything on your own. And I don't need to be a prophet to tell you that you will have problems. 
Jesus himself tells us that we're going to face problems. But I do know that you need him. I know that you need him because you're going to, you will have already had problems and there will be more problems. You will face more problems. And the longer you're around, the more problems that you will face. And the more invested you are, the harder the problems that will come at you. The more you engage, the harder the issues become. When you are truly living, this is an interesting thought, when you are truly living, you'll face hard times. When you are truly living, there'll be hard problems. When you are living an abundant life, harder problems will come at you than you are capable of dealing with or handling on your own. And Jesus said he came to bring abundant life. When we try to do it in our own strength, when we try to go it alone, when you forget to include God, when you carry the responsibility of everything, when you don't acknowledge that God is in control, then you have to do everything. You have to find every solution. You have to choose the right direction. You have to power through the problems. You have to fix every situation. You have to calm every storm. You have to stop every argument. You have to save every person. You have to provide for everyone. You have to protect everyone. And you have to do it all in an instant. It never stops. It's not at the speed of light. It's at the speed of life. Because life brings problems. No wonder you're stressed out. If you have to do all of that on your own, no wonder you're stressed out. No wonder you're worried. No wonder you can't sleep properly. No wonder you can't collect your thoughts. No wonder you don't even have time for hobbies because your worries are so consuming you that you can't even slow down enough to think about doing something that would just be fun. But God has not designed you or me to do it alone. He's not created you to carry the burdens of the world. That's not what you're created for. He wants you to recognize that He is there. He is there to lead you. He is there to guide you, to walk you through every step of the way. God is there. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31. I had the privilege of a attending and being with a family at a hospital recently uh, as a loved one was passing away. And I shared this before, but I was waiting um, in the hospital area and I was just asking God, what do I say? How do I bring comfort in a situation like this? What are the words, what words could I possibly bring that could help anybody? I had my Bible in my hand and God led me to this. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6 to 8. It says, Be strong and courageous. Don't be in fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. It is the Lord, your God, who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. It is the Lord, your God, who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. He loves you. Here's the deal. God doesn't just want to give you every resource to get through the season of trouble. 
or just give you every answer that you need to get through your problems. He wants to be what you need in every situation. He wants to be the answer to every problem that you face. Not give you the answer. He wants to be the answer. He doesn't want to just get you through this, the issue. He wants to be with you in the issue. It is all about God. Often we get into situations and it's overwhelming. We struggle to even think or process how we're going to get through things. There's so much on top of us. It just keeps piling up and piling up and piling up. And it's hard to know what to do. But a touch from heaven, a touch from God changes everything. Changes everything. In Acts 23, it tells this story about Paul who was in prison for preaching the gospel. People were plotting against him. They were looking at how they could kill him. They were gathering a posse. They were going to come after him. They were going to take him down. That was it. They're going to get him. They wanted him gone. They wanted him dead. Paul was worried, and rightfully so. I think he was worried with good reason. Forty people are coming after you, wanting you dead. That would worry you. But in Acts 23, verse 11, it says, The following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage. As you testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. Jesus reached out to Paul in his worry. One touch from Jesus, one moment with Jesus, changed everything. Changed absolutely everything. That was all he needed to know that Jesus was with him, to know that Jesus had a plan for him. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know the ins and outs of everybody's life. I don't know the wins and the losses, the problems of everyone and I don't know what you're worried about or concerned about right now but no matter how big or how small that issue is be encouraged Jesus is with you and he has a plan he has a plan Jesus wants such an incredible life for you that is what he's planned for you, a big life, an amazing life, a transformative life, an impactful life, an incredible power-filled life, filled with the Holy Spirit. We often do things like living safe, right? We want to live just safe, just be careful, don't take any risks, don't do anything. Can I say don't live safe, live faith. Live faith. Faith takes some risks. Faith takes some chances. If you have some big dreams, you've got to live faith. You can't live safe. If God's put something big on your heart, He's put a vision in your spirit to do something amazing, then you can't live safe. You have to live faith. And when we start to worry about it and get concerned about it, then we need to give it to God because it's bigger than what you can do. It should be bigger than what you can do. But we have to chase after it. The things and the dreams and the visions and the passions that God has put on your heart, you have to chase after it. You have to take a chance. You have to keep pushing it over to God. Not let the worry get on top of you, but step into faith. And the calling of God on your life. Commit that vision to God. For one moment, 10 seconds of silence. Close your eyes. Just go with me on this. Humor me on this. Close your eyes. Say, Lord, what is the vision for my life? What have you got for me? And now take a moment just to listen. 
as he drops a seed. He gives you a vision. For some of us, the picture, the vision, the dream that God puts in your heart is so big that it's intimidating. Well, it should be. It's so big that it seems impossible to do. Well, it should be impossible without God. If it's not intimidating to you, then it's probably insulting to God. Because we need to be giving it to God. Follow Him, calling out to Him. Commit it to God in prayer. Don't spend time worrying about the what-ifs, the maybes, the could-bes, the hasn't-happens. There is nothing more exciting than chasing after your God dream. Nothing more exciting. God wants all of us to think big, to be full of faith, to do something that you know you can't do without Him. Who believes that? Do you believe that? That God is calling you to do things that you can't do without Him. Do you believe it? You've got to get it in your spirit, full of faith. Don't worry. Give it to God. It's His worry. It's His burden. Think big. Over the next year, we want to see leaders raised up in the house. Big leaders who will plant churches. That's a little bit worrying as a pastor. I want to raise up big leaders to help me. But no, we're going to raise up big leaders and send them out to do kingdom stuff. Not send them here, but send them out to do amazing things. It's intimidating. And it's out of my hands. I have to give it to God. With the shower trucks, as most of you know, we do shower trucks for the homeless and people in tough situations and provide toiletries and things like that. We want to see shower trucks go into remote regions, into remote communities to help people that are far away. That's a big vision, that's a big task. I can't do it. It's out of my hands. I have to give it to God. But He will make it happen because God is good. It's a big vision. It's a big task. We have to give it to God. We want to go to Timor and we want to help the kids that we built that house for last year. Remember, we got to do that. How incredible was that? We want to go to Timor and we want to create education plans and we want to create a future for them so they can be educated and they can have children and good families and move forward and their village can be transformed. Transforming a village, that's a big task. That's intimidating. I worry about things like that. It's out of my hands. I give it to God. We want to set up this uh, family and domestic violence prevention program in the school. It's a big task. It's intimidating. It makes you worry. It's out of my hands. I give it to God because God is good. These are all big things that cause worry. You've got them in your heart. There's things in your heart that God has planted there, seeds in your heart, visions, pictures that God has dropped into your spirit, things He's calling you to do. And you cut it off because it's too big. It's worrying. Just give it to God. God will take care of it. We want to build transition housing for people coming out of rehab and coming out of prisons and people coming out of domestic violence and things like that. It's actually quite scary a thought. God planted the picture in my spirit about 10 years ago. I think we've got a short clip of it. He gave me a pretty detailed picture. This is what it looks like. For some reason, it's got really nice grass. I'm not very good at gardening, so I don't know how that's going to work. But God gave me this picture of these housing units where people can live and grow and be discipled, where families can thrive, where people can be hear the Word of God in a safe environment, where people who haven't learned how to do simple things can learn those things and cook, clean and pay your bills and be educated. And their lives can turn from breakdown and disaster into something amazing. It's a big dream. 
It got birthed out of my brokenness. Lots of you will know that I was a drug addict and a criminal. And I ended up in prison. When I got out of prison, I was supposed to just slot back into society. I was a 25-year-old man who had never paid a power bill. I had no idea how to do it. I didn't know how to do normal, normal things that everybody just expected me to do. A few good people gathered around me and helped me and teach me. God gave me a dream to do that on steroids, transition housing. How do we do that? That's too big. It's worrying, but it's out of my hands. I give it to God. What is the dream that God has given you? If the worship team could come and help me. Ask God this morning, what is it that I need to give to you? Stop worrying. Stop being concerned. Stop letting all the things get in the way. Stop letting what people are saying and doing and the things around us that are happening and start giving it to God. Start giving it to God. Because God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. He has a plan for this church. And God is good. So we can trust His plan. We just have to give it to God. Amen? Close our eyes for a minute as we pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you walk with us in every season and every situation. Lord, we are grateful that we are not on this journey alone. Lord, we're grateful that not only are we not on this journey alone, but we're walking with you and you want to walk with us. Lord, I pray right now that as we all give our attention to you, as we reflect on your goodness, that, Lord, even right now as I speak, the worry and the burden that's on some of our hearts is lifted. The worry about what happens tomorrow, what happens next week, what happens next year, may it be lifted off us. And may it be replaced with your peace. May it be replaced with the knowing that you are good. That you are sovereign. That you love us. That you care for us. Remind us again and again. That we can trust you. You are a firm foundation. Lord, for the parents in the room that are concerned for their kids, young or old or fully grown, kids who are doing well or kids who are in a tough season right now, Lord, we give them to you. We give it to you because you are good and you are sovereign and you are merciful. We pray for the children who seem to have strayed off the path. Lord, we cling to your word that tells us that even if they stray, they'll come back. We pray, Lord, for the prodigal sons and daughters. We give it to you. Take care of them. Watch over them. Protect them. Lord, for the people in the room who are maybe going through financial issues or work-related issues, Lord. Situations that are out of their hands. Maybe somebody else is deciding the next step for them. Well, Lord, we give it to you. Because you are good. And we love you. Lord, for 
people who are having marriage issues or any other relational problem, Lord, where it seems that they just keep coming upon hurdles and barriers, that there's separation and division. For those who don't know what to say next or what to do next or how to repair it, Lord, we give it to you because you are good and you are loving and you are sovereign. No matter what the issue, no matter what the burden, no matter what the worry, we thank you that we can give it to you. And Lord, as we release our worry and our burden and we rest in your embrace and in your peace and in your loving care, we ask that you birth within us afresh, renew an excitement in our spirits for all the things you have planned for us, both corporately as a church, whether that be raising up leaders and planting churches, feeding the poor, sending shower trucks to remote places, transition housing, whatever it is, our connect groups, our prayer services. Lord, birth in us afresh an excitement of faith to chase after big things. And for individual people who you've put a call on their lives, each and every person in here, a ministry, a dream, a passion, a vision. Lord, give the courage required to chase after it. No matter how big it seems, Lord, we want to chase after it. And we know that to do that, we have to give it to you. Help us take the next step. Help us move forward. Help us to think beyond today and think to the destiny that you have for us. Thank you, Lord. Renew in us a sense of dignity and identity and purpose. Renew in us a passion to share your word. Renew in us a spirit of unity. We love you, God. And we're grateful for your presence here today. Healing hearts. Thank you, Jesus. With everyone's eyes closed and heads bowed, the Spirit of God is here. The Spirit of God is here. No matter what season you're in, no matter what you're going through, God is here. And with every eye closed and every head bowed and nobody looking around, if you're here this morning and you know that you need to get right with God, you know that you need to either come back into relationship with Him or you need to give your heart to Him for the first time, then I'm going to give you that opportunity. And all I'm going to ask you to do with nobody looking around is just... Raise your hand, just straight up, just as a sign, I'm giving my life to God. If that's you this morning, just raise your hand, straight up. Yeah, wow, I see that hand there. Well done, courageous, so good. I see that hand and that hand, well done. Amazing, amazing. Is there anyone else? Yeah, yeah, I see that hand up the back there as well. Thank you, Jesus. God's here. He's here. He's here. I'm going to pray now, and I just ask all of us, just combine our hearts, connect ourselves to the prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are here, that your love is so evident 
for each and every one of us. Lord, this morning, we, I, acknowledge again that you are God, that you are sovereign. And Lord, I thank you that you sent your son to die on a cross to forgive me of my sins, to be the ultimate atoning sacrifice. And then you filled him with your life and your power and he was raised again, sealing my destiny and my eternity with you in heaven. Lord, we're so grateful for that. So grateful. And Lord, I thank you for those people who courageously responded this morning to a call to get right with you, to commit their lives to following you and honouring you and glorifying you. May they be blessed abundantly. May they be covered in a cloak of protection. May they sense your spirit and your power with them as they walk. And Lord, for every person here, as our day moves forward, as we uh, move on from this space of worship. May we carry your spirit within us. May our hearts be transformed by it. May we carry sweet spirits and soft hearts. And may we look to glorify and honour you in all that we do. Lord, we pray that you are glorified. We love you, we honour you, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a clap of praise? So very good, so very good, very good. God's good, right? God is so, so good. A reminder if um, you feel you need to be baptised, you want to be baptised, Grab a, um, a gold card there just around the corner there in the foyer and write on that and put it in the box. If you've got a testimony, a powerful testimony of something that God's done in your life, uh, we want to hear about that as well. There's a space for that on the card. If you've got a prayer request, you, you want somebody to stand with you and pray for you, believe with you for a breakthrough or a miracle in your life, or even if it's a praise point, put it on the gold card because we want to do that too. And if you need to know anything else, you want to join a team, you want to get in a connect group, you want to anything, use the gold card. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. So please avail yourself of that. Hey, we're going to uh, sing a song and then um, there'll be coffee available. And then at 12 o'clock, we've got a special general meeting for those who are here for that. But um, let's stand to our feet, shall we? What do you want to sing? Let's praise him, eh? Let's praise our God. Take it away, team.